Hey guys, my name is Shai and I want to talk about transcending the Lightworker Starseed archetypes of service. So I've touched on this a few times before, but it's coming back around for me right now because of course more and more I see that all of these messages, all of these themes we work for, through, right? They go in spirals, <laughs> they go in spirals and they keep coming back around for one more upgrading, like one more up leveling and one more moment of integration and understanding. So essentially, I think this is going to resonate with you if you already like see yourself or think of yourself as like a light worker star seed who came here to help and if you often use phrases like I like to be of service right and or ideas of service to others as opposed to service to self and I think actually I want to just start by taking a look at that language in and of itself <laughs> because I think that's part of just kind of what we're moving on from, what we're evolving, right? What we're evolving. I think this kind of language, the, the language of service in terms of Lightworker Starseeds, I think that's kind of, it's going to start to become dated. And it's just, for me, it's starting to feel a little dated. And so I've been kind of thinking about why, right? What, what, what's going on with that? So I just want to take a minute to talk about the language before I get into the cards, because for me, this is how, this is one of the ways I can make sense of what I'm feeling into here. So I first came across the idea of there being service to self and service to other camps, right? That's how, that's one way of organizing types of consciousness, service to self and service to others. And you know, as you all probably know, that that's kind of another way of d saying negative entities and positive, positively oriented entities. It, it's it, it, it's like, you know, people wanted to move away from good versus evil, right? And then so they started saying positive versus negative. And then they were like, okay, well, even that's kind of polarizing. So then they started saying um, service to self and service to others, right? And I first came across that that language when I when I read um, it was very shortly after my awakening and I read The Law of One, the raw material, which uh, I'm, I, I don't think, I, I don't remember exactly when that was channeled, right? But I think it was like in the 70s or 80s. Don't quote me on that. You'd have to check it out. But I'm pretty sure um, like that group who, who channeled that, who channeled raw and who channeled that material, like it's, it's, was definitely in the 20th century so you know that's getting a little bit dated even though that isn't very long ago the speed with which consciousness is evolving that actually puts it quite a little bit back and don't get me wrong i i like i love the raw material um in the law of one books like they were so important for me and they blew my mind and they awakened my consciousness on so many levels and i i absolutely love them i think there is so 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 much just super high frequency beneficial information in there and i encourage everybody to read them but um you know, I'm kind of falling, <laughs> I can hear myself kind of falling back into um, an older version of myself where I basically spent all my time doing literary criticism, right? I had a BA in English and I taught English and I taught college level writing and that kind of thing. Um, so that's why, that's why to me, like, it's natural for me to fall into tracing uh, the history of thought through the use of language in literature, <laughs> essentially. So, <sighs> yeah, so I, I, I basically... That book, I think, had a rather large impact on the way that starseed lightworker types are still speaking, actually, how we still speak. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it might be time to shift into a, into a new idea because I think that way of speaking in terms of being of service, being of service, service to others, in particular being, being service to others instead of being service to self, I think that that's starting to feel kind of outdated and that's that's fine right that's fine so i mean there's probably other other origins of the language as well i'm just not familiar with what they might be <laughs> and that's where i trace it back for from my own reading so okay so anyway then i want to take a look at um how to put it okay so other places other places that kind of first introduced the idea of wanderer starseeds uh, to, you know, to our 
understanding, right? Kind of put it out there. The idea of being a wanderer starseed. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. This card comes out just to like reflect <laughs> what I'm saying. Um, the card of teamwork, right? The card of teamwork. That's the wanderer starseed. I can't remember her name. Somebody's going to know her name, right? The, the person who, the woman who did a lot of like deep hypnosis and uncovered all of these stories of the volunteers, right? The starseed volunteers. Um, and the, like there being three waves of volunteers. I can't remember her name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and then that is another place where we got this idea of, you know, we came here, we volunteered to come here. We came here to help. And of course, so many people, myself included, we have our own personal memories of remembering like we came here to be of service. We came here to help. And it, it, it has like constructed in our way of speaking to each other and in our way of thinking about ourselves, it has constructed this service oriented mentality. And just, I want to be explicitly clear that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, this service oriented mentality is so inspiring and beautiful and wonderful. And it has been important for me to embody that as, as I kind of adjusted myself to understanding like who I am, why I'm here and like w what I'm doing as a consciousness, right? So important. And so it's not exactly that this service mentality, service oriented mentality, it's not exactly that, that that's going to go away. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's that there's like an evolution of this concept happening. And I think Lightworker Starseeds, if you have, but if you're seeing this video and you have previously often thought of yourself as this, like, I'm here to be of service, I'm here to be of service type of thing, that's, that's going to be you're evolving your understanding of what that even means, okay? And <laughs> this is happening on the human level, right? But on a higher level, this is actually happening on like a higher self level. This is something that I've been chewing on for a long time. I used to think of my higher self as a kind of static, perfect version of myself that didn't need to evolve or change or grow or learn because it was already static and perfect. And I don't really feel that that's the case anymore. I feel that all consciousness is always evolving. That includes my own higher self. And of course, um, just to get a picture, um, ignore all this. This is just from a video I made earlier this week. I don't have another piece of paper handy. Um, you know, it's also depends. I mean, on the one hand, you can think of it in terms of your higher self evolving and changing and growing and learning, or you can just think of it in terms of your, your, you, you, right? human self down here, you exist through spirals all the way through all the, all the way through all possible layers of consciousness, all the way from your human self and maybe even below your human self, whatever that is, all the way up to your source, right? All the way up to your source. So really it's, you can think of it absolutely in terms of your higher self growing, evolving and changing, or equally valid, I would say, is just thinking it in terms of you're tuning into an even higher level of your higher self. You're, you're actually just like maybe before from your human self, you could only, you were kind of resonating, uh, you're vibrating in resonance with this level of your higher self right here. But maybe now, maybe you're, you've expanded the level of your consciousness that you can hold in your human form. And now you're actually tuning into this level of your higher self and this level of your higher self has a more expanded, more complete, more abstract view of who you are than the slightly lower quote unquote <laughs> version of yourself that you were tuning into before. So a note on that. So basically this higher version of your higher self has a more nuanced, more expanded, more abstract understanding of this whole concept of being of service, right? This whole concept of being of service, because I, I want to like, like address the, this on like this, the, because when I say higher self level, um, I mean, there's so many different ways you can use that phrase, right? So specifically for this reading, when I, when I'm saying higher self, I kind of mean your 5d, 60, 70, your kind of middle dimension, consciousness, right? And that is typically the level that I equate with many galactic starseed experiences. Um, of course, you know, you can be a starseed, you know, on you can be an alien on, on another planet down here in 3D, right? Um, but many of us, I would say basically all of us, um, have are, to, are also tuned into our starseed aspects that are 5D, 6D, or 7D. And they can also 
um, if, if you have memories or just vague impressions of what life might have been like in on another planet or in, in another dimension, right? It, it Like 5D, 6D type of, ex even 7D type of experience can still seem physical, right? It can still seem physical. Like it, it, and maybe, maybe it even is physical, right? But it just, it doesn't, it's not necessarily physical in the same way that your carbon human earth body is, but it can still, you can still have like a physical form, right? You can still have a, an avatar. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a whole nother topic. But so when I say higher self in this reading, I am specifically referring to like your higher self as it is relevant to your starseed self, like your galactic selves, like all of the versions of you that are out there in the galaxy, um, connected to all of the different, you know, galactic and intergalactic civilizations that you typically connect with when you're thinking of yourself as a star seed and you know your home is out there in the stars and that type of thing right um so it's that's all it's all connected so what i'm trying i am trying to get to a point here which is that the star seed level of our consciousness right let's just i'm just going to call it that for convenience the star seed level of our consciousness like had I would say, had this programming even, had this way of thinking, had this state of consciousness that was about, I'm volunteering to come to earth to be of service, right? I'm going to come, like, help raise consciousness on earth. I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm volunteering to be of service, right? I'm volunteering to be of service. That, like, it, that, like, that type of thinking, that programming is there even in your starseed higher self, right? You're like your galactic starseed consciousness, this this thing of being of service. But like I'm saying now, there's this opportunity to tune into a higher level of this, a higher level of this. So it's that's why this is so interesting to me. And that's why it's been kind of percolating in the back of my mind because it's not just my human self um, like evolving beyond this or not even beyond, just evolving to include <laughs> A more expanded idea if I can just be vague about it right evolving through this idea of being of service it's not just my human self it's also my higher self is to some extent it's like the higher self is actually healing from this right healing from this because the this is I think this is going to resonate with a lot of you right if you re, if you have any it doesn't matter if you have a specific memory you can just have like a vague impression right this feeling of like I came here for a greater purpose I came here with a mission I came here to be of service, I came here to help, those type of thoughts, right? Those type of feelings, those type of like deep inner knowings, those tend to come with a flavor of self-sacrifice, right? It's like a little bit with a dash of self-sacrifice on top, right? A dash of sacrifice. And any anytime there is sacrifice involved, that is like that is like a wounding experience. So that this entire experience of like the starseed self-sacrifice to be of service thing has a wound up there even in like your 5d 60 the higher self level of consciousness if this is making any sense um so it's the human self healing healing and transcending this and it and that's happening because you're tuning into the level of your higher self your higher star seed self that is also healing and transcending from this <laughs> and here we have the two of cups with the rainbow bridge the rainbow bridge this has been such a theme this week building bridges, right? Making rainbows, two and two coming together to make this connection. And what I'm feeling right this now, and I'm feeling this really hard, I'm actually getting a very intense sensation in like my heart center. And it's like, the bridge has been built, guys. <laughs> we did it. We built the bridge. We built the bridge. We did it. Um, and so that the, this is something I have not picked up on until right now. I mean, maybe maybe I sort of did, but it's it's hitting home really right now, is that it's like our work year is done. <laughs> our work year is done. The hard part is over. The hard part is over. We did it. <laughs> because it's like our, our higher selves wanted to come here, right? Like if you resonate with this whole thing of being of service, then your higher self wanted to come here to establish a connection, right? You, you wanted to walk into darkness and l share the darkness with humanity, right? To share darkness with someone is how you really truly can become one with them, right? Sharing darkness with someone is such a deep, deep experience. And honestly, I mean, if someone is in darkness, you cannot truly understand them unless you learn to share their darkness. So it's like, we came here 
and we shared the darkness and we gained the understanding and we established the connection. It's like if you were to, you know, imagine you're trying to build a bridge, but with like really primitive technology, maybe all you have is like some ropes, <laughs> right? And you're trying to build a bridge over a river. This is like, imagine you're like, you know, way back with no technology. So, so you would have to send somebody first to like swimming across the river with her pulling the rope because like too far you can't throw the rope across the river so somebody had to somebody like you had to pick someone who was the really really good at swimming and also someone who was willing to self-sacrifice and possibly get swept away by the river and maybe the water's really cold maybe it's really fast and they were willing they volunteered they said hey I'm gonna I'll swim across that river because I know I can do it I can do it because I'm a really good swimmer and because I am passionate about building this bridge so this person you know all of the star seeds right built this bridge swam across the river, swam across the river, pulling the rope, pulling the rope, and then they get to the other side and they drive the piles, right? They go cut down some trees, they pull the logs, they drive the piles into the ground, and then they tie the rope to the piles. And now a rope has been built across the bridge. But I think we're actually beyond that point. I think it's like the bridge has actually been built. It's like, but you, first we had to establish the rope line. And we, we've done that. We've done that. We established the rope line. And now the bridge has been built. And now people can come and go freely, right? <laughs> the bridge has been built. The rainbow bridge has been built. We have done it. So that so since since this and I know you might look around at the planet and go like I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Things don't look done to me. But it's like that doesn't mean that everything has been completed and built on the other side of the of the of the river, right? But it just means that well, the hard part is over. Building the bridge. Building the bridge was everything. Building the bridge was everything. That was the hardest part. That was that was what had to be done by the few. That was what had to be done by the vanguard. That was what had to be done by the volunteers. And now the bridge has been built and now it's going to be so much easier to build more bridges and then like, you know, resources are going to flow across the river and it's going to be great. And so now that the bridge has been built, you don't have to be swimming across the river anymore now, do you? That, that job is done. You can go do something else. You're no, you're no longer in that mode of self-sacrifice. You're no longer in that mode of being of service. You can go do whatever you want. You can continue to volunteer for self-sacrificing work if you so choose. <laughs> but I don't think that that kind of work, it's like you'd have to seek it out. Yeah, <laughs> just so... <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing so hard because that card is saying it's like I was just saying I don't really think like, we, that, that we need that kind of work anymore and yeah Ten of Swords absolutely confirming that that work is done that work is done you do not need to do that anymore it's irrelevant it is over it is over there is no more work of self-sacrifice that needs to be done there is no work even of to be of service it doesn't it, like that's done it's done Ten of Swords is the final ending it's done it's done, it's done, it's done, it's over. Thank you, perfect Ten of Swords. I've never been so happy to see a Ten of Swords that is perfect. Confirms that the self-sacrificing work is over. Um, and of course, I mean, you can still find it if you go searching for it. You can create it for yourself, but it would be like an artificial creation just to keep yourself down. So, I mean, I can't recommend it, but of course you do you, but <laughs> Ten of Swords, right? It's done, it's over. So... It, there's a little bit of a feeling like, well, what do you do now, <laughs> right? What do you do now? Because you still, you still want to see people thrive, right? You still want to help, like you still want Earth's consciousness to evolve. You're still passionate about the evolution of consciousness, and that's it. It's, I think we can, we can move away from you know talking about how like I want to be of service, I want to help to like I am just passionate about the evolution of consciousness. Like that's how I feel about it, right? It's like I think about spirituality and consciousness. And just anything to do with that, <laughs> Emperor, Empress, right? Empress card. I think about all this stuff, the kind of stuff I talk about on this channel. I think about it constantly all the time. It's like I can't stop myself from thinking about it. It's just I wake up and and I, that's where I am. And then I think about all day, I, I, I'm in it. And then I go to sleep and then I'm off in some other dimension doing something. And <laughs> it's like it just doesn't ever stop and I wouldn't have it any other way because this is what I love. This is what I'm so passionate about and it's exciting and it gives me a reason to like be alive right it just it makes the whole earth experience like interesting to me right? it makes it interesting to me back when i was not into any of this like it was hard to find a reason to be alive because everything was just boring like nothing but like it was hard to find something i was passionate about right like all all this type of spiritual stuff is the own like the biggest thing that i'm passionate about like outside of my family right <laughs> it's just the, the this is where the passion is and like like, like the, this empress card that comes out right 
So what do you want to do next? Well, you can do anything. You can do literally whatever you want. And it's like your, your passion for uplifting consciousness, like your passion for the evolution of consciousness. That's what it is for me, right? For you, it could be something, you could phrase it differently. It could be something else. It could be something different. So just put in whatever your passion is, right? <laughs> whatever your passion is. If it's, if it's, I'm just going to go with passion for the evolution of consciousness. It, you can still absolutely, you're going to be supporting that. You're going to be supporting that because you can't help it because you're just passionate about it. So it's, you're switching from this. I mean, just that, look at this empress, right? Look at this empress. What do you think she does? What makes her the empress? What makes her the empress? Yes, she is there to like, she, she, she holds space for the people, right? She, she holds space for her people. She holds space for her people. And through her divine energy, like the golden and the silver waters stream down from the higher realms, they stream down through her into the earth. She is like a conduit, a grounded conduit of divine energy, right? A grounded conduit of divine energy. She's a little bit different from the high priestess, right? Because the high priestess is that hidden spiritual figure, right? But the empress is very much of the world and in the world, and yet she is the the bridge. <laughs> she is the bridge, right? Or, you know, you can... Um, the, or the emperor or the imperial ruler pick your pronouns right <laughs> the the this this energy this is the energy of being the embodied bridge of the of the divine the embodied bridge of the divine and this empress dropping out of any distortions we have about ruling monarchy because of our human experience right if we just tune into the abstract archetype the highest archetype of this empress energy is just channeling the energy living her passion walking the earth allowing the light and the water to flow down through her and to flow into the earth spreading 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 out from around her and like wherever she walks the flowers bloom right wherever she walks people become Full of laughter and joy wherever she walks she she just inspires just by her presence right but she walks as one of the people she's not above anyone this is there is no like hierarchical command structure right this is the, like the empress not in terms of politics or government right this is the empress just in terms of energy the energetic empress right the energetic empress Wow, I was like, that's the, I pulled it, you know, I don't often pull cards from like the middle, I typically like to pull the one at the top, but like that one was like shining in my mind. <laughs> and what is it? It's the Ten of Pentacles. And, <laughs> and this is such a special Ten of Pentacles, because obviously this, as you can see, this is the Ten of Crystals, and it transcends all of the normal ideas of the Ten of Pentacles, which are, you know, absolute abundance, wealth, happiness, and prosperity for all, for the whole community, right? But this is like, we have all of these crystal stars and they're spread out on a crystal grid and they're connected by a network of light, right? <laughs> so this is like interdimensional Ten of Pentacles. This is like interdimensional networking and how like the abundance flows from everywhere. The abundance flows from all around. So these are the energies for you to be turning, tuning into as you continue to explore your passion for the evolution of consciousness on earth, right? It's no longer like limited to these ideas of being of service, right? Service to others. Um, and interesting on that is I really started to want, cause I, I have like, there's probably so many examples of me talking about being of service, like in my videos, right? Because I have really resonated with that language and I really enjoyed it and found it useful. And so it's funny, <laughs> but I'm probably going to be moving away from it. Not that, you know, I, I, I don't want to be like the language police, right? So it's like, I don't care what language anybody is using. Language is just a tool and we're all just trying to express and articulate ourselves as best we can. And that can be very difficult, right? So it's not about being language police. It's just that I might naturally find myself moving away from this language of service because I actually started noticing um, some people in my family who have past lives where they essentially like they worked in, in service. They worked in service, which is kind of the British way of saying like to, to be 
like a maid to be a servant, right? And so, you know, uh, specifically, I have a couple people in my family who were um, maids in Victorian England. <laughs> so they lived their life working in service. And the and like that, like those imprints from that, right? The imprints from this mentality of living a life of service, in this case, like literally that was their literal job <laughs> and a job that kind of took over then consumed their entire lives and it has left imprints on them in, in this life that they are unwinding from, right? They're unwinding this. And it made me realize it's like, wow, yeah, like I can also do the same thing and I can even, like we're doing that in parallel, right? They are unwinding from the energetic imprint of being like a maid servant, right? <laughs> and uh, here, and I can unwind from the imprints of being like a starseed servant or a lightworker servant. And the cool thing is, you know, we got this Empress coming out and the Ten of Crystals coming out. So it's like, as you transcend this archetype of service, that actually makes all of your service oriented goals, like all of your ideas of I want to help, I want to be of service, you actually just become more natural, like y you have even greater impact. <laughs> justice justice oh i love it when the cards just are perfect oh my god <laughs> yeah everything comes into balance and you you have the impact you have the impact you have even greater impact because it is coming from a place of centeredness and a place of balance and a place of justice like a place of fairness right um because the 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 self-sacrifice to be of service thing, that's out, actually, like, that's not balanced, right? That's out of balance. With the Justice card, we're coming into the balance. And from that place of balance, um, like, you can just be even more of an open channel for cosmic light, right? Whatever energies you are here to receive and to hold and to share. And sharing energy, transmitting energy is done just by living and breathing. You don't actually have to do anything to do that, right? Like, sure, I, I come on the internet and I post a video and the video contains an energetic, energetic transmission, but it's like, you, you know, you, you, you are, everyone's transmitting energy all the time. Um, and some of the people having the most enormous energetic impact on earth are completely unknown to anyone, right? Are, are like almost invisible. Like they live entirely solitary lives, lives just in meditation, right? And those people have some of the hugest energetic impact. Um, you can even feel for them <laughs> because they're like these massive columns of light, right? Um, so it's not about sharing physically, like, although you can do that if you're passionate about that if it, and it interests you, but it's, it's kind of like a side thing, right? That's just a side thing. So what was I saying? It's like, yeah, as, as you transcend the service to others, light worker, Arch, like archetype, you, you actually just become even more effective at those goals. But you now just, as you live and breathe, <laughs> and as you follow your passion, and as you live your life, doing whatever it is that you feel like you want to do, right, as you walk the earth as this empress, it, it it's like now you just live for yourself live you, you live through the the lens of your own awareness right you live embodied in your body and you live through the lens of your own awareness and as you do that you channel enormous amounts of light and that light floods down into the earth and everything you do for your own passion for your own enjoyment that is what like I would say like stirs the pot, <laughs> right? It stirs the pot because really at the end of the day, in terms of the energy itself, all that you're really doing here is rising up, right? You came all the way down in the descension cycle. You hit the bottom at some point. Now you're spiraling back up and that's all you need to be doing is spiraling back up, spiraling back up every day expanding your consciousness every day evolving and this isn't something you need to figure out how to, how to do you, you're just doing it naturally <laughs> you're just doing it naturally you know if you put the intention on evolving growing changing learning ascending spiraling up spiraling out whatever language does it for you as you put your awareness on that as you put your intentions on that you just naturally it just happens naturally it just happens naturally it just happens naturally and as you follow your interests and your passions it just continues to happen and happen and happen and that is all that you need to be doing and that is where you can find the sweet spot of life right the balance 
the balance, the balance. That's that's where the sweet spot is. The sweet spot is where all of the noise, all of the thoughts, all of the bullshit just kind of drains away, right? It becomes noise that is on like the other side <laughs> of a soundproof wall. Maybe it's out there, but it's just, it, it's not part of your reality anymore, right? Because your reality is on a higher plane than it was, right? Your reality has gone you were down here and kind of tuned into a higher reality that was here. But now, you know, I mean, maybe your human self is even here and you're tuned into a reality that's up there. So it's like your entire span of consciousness, your entire bandwidth, right? That, I mean, and you go beyond this, we can talk about oversoul, we can talk about primordial consciousness, we can go even bigger, but for the purposes of this video, we can just talk about the kind of bandwidth of consciousness that kind of includes your human self and your starseed selves and your higher self, your kind of middle dimensional higher self, all of that, that even that has just like gone up a whole octave. Like the, the, this whole bandwidth of yourself has just clunked up and that it completely changes the experience of your life. Um, how you think about yourself, how you think about what you're doing here, how you think about how you got here, how you think about the universe, all of it, <laughs> all of it, all of it, all of it. So, you know, I was casting about for some oracle cards, but I think I just want to leave you guys here. That was the message for today, for right now. So, sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.